Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to uh, those of you that I don't know. And hi to everybody that I do know that we haven't seen for absolutely ages. Um, we miss you loads and loads and loads. So my name is Lucy and I work at Derbyshire County Council Donut Creative Art Studios. And today we're going to be doing a video workshop um, around making stencil art in different ways. So materials you're going to need. Oh, that's backwards. I'll just read it. White and or coloured card. So white card. Doesn't matter what colour. You can have a few colours, no colours. Card if you haven't got any. I've also used the back. I've just cut out a little bit of the um, one of the many bags that I have from Christmas left over. And it's really nice thick paper so you can use that as well. Failing that, just use paper. It's absolutely fine. You're also going to need scissors. Check. Craft knife if you're an adult and you are okay using one. Check. Sponges. So you can use expensive paint sponges or you can just use cheap washing up sponges, which we're going to cut up. Check. Glue. I have some glue here somewhere. Um, pencil and a rubber. Felt pens. So a range of different colours. And you might also need a glue tack. Okay, so that's materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with looking at a picture that we're going to be using for our stencils. So today I chose a picture of a rat. So the reason that I chose a picture of a rat is um, because we're doing kind of street art style and I know that a lot of you might know who Banksy is. So Banksy is a famous street artist who uses stencils and he does images of rats in lots of different ways um, and is quite famous for it. However, I think Banksy pinched that idea from a chap who is French and he was um, a very an early street artist that was around in the early 80s in France, in Paris and um, his name was Black Le Rat. Now Black Le Rat first used images of rat in lots of different types of street art and became quite famous for it. So the rat is definitely something that can be recognisable with different types of street art. So this is the picture we're going to use. So we can use the picture in lots of different ways. What I want to start first is I want to do a background because we're going to be using paint today. So the background needs to be able to dry before um, the images are all cut out. So we're going to start with the background. So what you're going to need is a piece of card. Or a piece of paper. So we've got the card and we're also going to need our sponges. So sponges, we're just going to cut up I'm going to cut up more than I need, just in case. Pretty sure we're not going to need them. And then we need some paint. So, today I've chosen just three colours. I've chosen yellow, purple, pink. Any kind of paint. This is just ready mix paint. Fairly cheap. I think I get this one from the range. Um, and I have a tray, but you can also use a palette. So you can either use a palette or a tray. Today I'm going to use the tray because I think it's easier when it comes to sponging. So I'm just going to blob on one, two, three blobs of paint. Now, your three blobs of paint, we can always top up if we need to. 
and my card which is here in the background all I'm going to do so I'm going to be using the yellow first so this is actually an old piece of card with a bit of old drawing on and um, you can use anything at all um, so you can use paper if you like yeah so I'm going to dab some of the yellow and I'm going to make sure that I've not got my sponge too wet and I'm just going to build it up so it's a good idea to have something on your table so you don't end up making a mess everywhere so I'm just going to dab in areas And set that one aside and then I'm going to go for some pink now you don't want your sponges to be wet you need your sponges to be dry so I'm just going to build some pink up as well you can if you'd like cut your sponges so they make different shapes so you don't always get the square and you can also move the paint about quite nicely. So what I don't want you to do is go over all so you can't see the yellow. I want you to be able to see the yellow. I also try not to mix the two colours in too much. We do want to still see the yellow and have some definition. You can mix in slightly in some areas. And we're just going to build it up as we go along. Okay. I like doing it with sponges. I find it very relaxing and therapeutic. So I'm going to do some purple next. Now purple's the strongest colour. So I'm probably not going to come in as much with it. Different areas. Um, So on this, I'm going into some of the pink areas with the purple. I'm not putting too much purple onto the sponge. And when the sponge starts running out, that's when you can dab in between really quite effectively. So we don't want to use too much paint because we don't want your paper or your card, whichever it is that you're using, to buckle too much. So we want the paper or the card to try and stay a little bit flat. So this is going to be one of your backgrounds. I'm going to go back to using some yellow now because I think two of the colours are very dark and quite strong. So we're going to go back to using a bit of yellow. Lovely. So more over here and then I'm going to come in a bit of inside where the drier bits of the purple and the pink are and build it up so just keep building up the design and then I want to come back with some pink and some of this yellow over here to break it up it's a very large area of uh, yellow there I think it probably needs breaking up so just have a play about until you like what you see. So I'm going to come back with a tiny little bit more of the purple. What do you think? How are we looking? So that's what we've got so far. So that now you can set to one side and we're going to move it to one side to dry. So I'm going to pop this over here. There you go, you can see me again. So now we've done our beautiful background. I'll show you again. Ta-da! Ta-da! We are going to create some stencils. So... 
Here's one I cut earlier. That's one I cut earlier. Hello, can you see me through it? Um, so this is the wrap. Now, how you can how you can print out an image or you can trace an image. The easiest thing to do is trace it when just on a window. So pop cardboard or your paper. Thin card works best for stencils because you can use it more than once. Um, it doesn't tear as easily as paper. And if you're using a craft knife, it is actually easier to cut out. So you get your wrap, pop the wrap behind and hold it up against the window. Hold it in the window and you'll be able to see the outline. You draw the outline. So when you print out um, your picture or you draw your picture, if you colour it in or do the outline in black, you'll be able to see it really nicely to trace it onto your card. Now, if you are fantastic at drawing, just draw straight onto your card. Yeah. Um, any mistakes, it doesn't matter. Um, you can rub out, just use a pencil and you can rub out. So, this is the rat I prepared earlier. Now we're going to set him to one side and we're going to look at ratty number two. So, we're going to do, I've got two weeks of workshops. So this is part one and I've got part two. So we're going to use a couple of techniques where we use the inside, so the actual rat itself, when it's cut out, which looks just like this. And we're going to use the outside for a stencil, which looks like this. But if you don't get it right first time, it doesn't matter. Trace or draw two onto your card and then cut one out and then the other. So it doesn't matter if you make mistakes then. So the drawing that I have chosen is quite detailed. So it's quite difficult to do with scissors. If you try and do a really simple shape, you can use scissors. So what I'm going to do is give you a really quick demo of how to use scissors. And I'm going to do that on my old um, gift bag. So all I'm going to do is get my pencil. I'm going to draw on, um, I'll just do a letter L, kind of. Now, I've just drawn a letter L, I don't really like it, I'm going to change it, and that's the good thing about this, is you can, you can change it and alter it so it makes more sense for you, until you like it. So then what I'm going to do is... I want to cut it out. So the easiest way to cut out, to keep the outside, is to fold it on one of your lines and then use your scissors to cut into it like that. And then that gives you a starting point. And then what you're going to do really carefully is you're going to cut it out. If you're not good at cutting out or you don't have any very good scissors, either ask someone to help or take your time. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you are struggling with cutting out, keep your shapes, your pictures, or whatever you're going to do for your stencil really simple. So I'm going to cut out. Yeah. It's a bit of a street art style L, not your normal type of L. So. Now I've got to remember which line was correct. Um, so down there, up, and back, and then back up again. And that leaves me with this piece, the inside piece, and this piece, the outside piece. Okay, and we're going to use both pieces for different things. So that is a quick demo of doing a really straightforward, um, simple shape. So back to Mr. Ratty. So what we're going to do now is we are going to create some different colours for the inside Mr. Ratty. Okay, so that's going to be our first piece. So I have already pre-cut green rat, yellow rat, 
and I'm also going to do orange wrapped. So, you want to take your piece of cardboard onto your table and pop Mr. Ratty on. Okay, so if you'd like to help you out, you can use a little bit of loot tack. So, you can use tiny bits of loot tack. Keep him still while you draw him around him, or you could just hold it down with your hand. Depends how confident you feel. So, if we put some on his tail, because his tail is the thinnest area, so really thin bits are the, the bits that are the trickiest to cut out, especially if you're using scissors. So, turn Ratty over, pop him right at the edge so we're not wasting card. And press down where all of our bits of loot tack are. So now we're going to trace round Mr. Rat. I think maybe we should give Ratty a name. So should we call Rat? Should let's call him Gordon. Gordon the Rat. He's got some very big spiky claws, has Gordon. And that's why I quite liked the picture, and which is the one that I chose. So right up, take your time, there is no rush. If you go wrong or you make the wrong kind of pencil line, that's totally fine. Just use a rubber and rub it out. So, I'm going to go round. There we go. Now, remove Mr. Rat, and I'm going to take off the bits of blue tack too, pop them over here. So now we have the rat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut him out with a knife. So I've got a cutting mat here to protect the table, and what I'm going to do is just really quickly cut him out so when you're using a craft knife always cut towards yourself never try and cut backwards or around a corner oh dear the blade's just fallen out tighten that up again So always cut towards yourself. Stop and then move your card around as you go. Don't put your fingers too close in case you slip. But if you hold down the card, it does help. Now, if you are using paper, you're going to have to do this bit with scissors. Unless you've got a very, very sharp craft knife. And quite a heavy touch your paper will tear and it will be a bit of a nightmare for you so I'll do around his foot these bits are probably the hardest bits the little claws The blade's a bit blunt as well, but hey how. The sharper your craft knife, the easier it's going to be. So around his other little foot. Chop him out. Like I said, if you want to use scissors, you can. And I'll show you a little cheat of getting started with the scissors in a minute. It should help. I love rats. I think they're cute. That's a lot of people do, though. No. 
sometimes probably a bit of a hated animal. <sighs> Nearly finished. We'll do his ear. Doesn't matter if you just go over the line ever so slightly, as long as you get in the basic detail of the rat. All is good. So round the base of the tail and to the end. Always remember to put your lid back onto the craft knife. So now we have an orange rat too. So I'm going to set my cardboard to one side because that other big piece of cardboard we can probably use at a later date for another workshop and I'm going to find some glue. So let's have a look in here, get some glue. Glue. You put stick, PVA. If you're going to use PVA you pro should probably um, not use too much so put stick is probably better for this one. So we've got our three different coloured brats. Let's move the cut, cutting mat. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to arrange Mr. Ratty into in different ways. So you can have all the same colour, you can have different colours. Now, it will help to have a piece of card that's bigger, the back, the background image, than, than your actual stencil, okay? So you want to be able to arrange it onto the piece of paper or card without running out of room. So I'm going to show you some different arrangements on this piece of white card. So I'm just going to angle the camera down. There we go. So you, there's different, lots of different things that you can do. So you can have them really close together. So it's like a it creates like a shadow. So if you look. orange underneath is like the shadow of the yellow which always looks quite nice you can also add the green to that if you'd like so have them really close together slightly offset it's a bit tricky with the tails on this one it's tricky doing it upside down as well like that Or you can arrange Mr. Ratty in different ways. So you can have that one down. That looks quite cool. I quite like that. However, the one I'm going to go with is where the one where all the tails are linked like that at the bottom. So make sure they're all on. like that so what we're going to need now is um, some glue so you can use for your background your painted background that you did earlier or you can use white card totally up to you so I'm going to go with the painted background it is also nice if you use, if you're using colored card you can use black and the black stands out beautifully against the coloured card. So if I was going to cut out the original like that, he would go beautifully onto this gorgeous coloured background here. So I'm going to arrange my ratties back on with the tails. like that. Now we're going to glue them down. I'm going to start with the yellow. So, it's a bit sticky. It was a bit rubbish. I mean, bear with me, let me get a different glue stick. It's probably a little bit old. Let's make sure Hopefully this one will be a bit better. Yeah, that's better. So make sure that when you're popping your glue on, you're going right around the edges. 
So all any rat is going to stick there. You could do this on a piece of paper as well, so you don't get glue all over your working area. That's always good. And then some in the middle. So then we're going to stick Mr. Ratty down. Let's move the others out of the way. There we go. Fabulous. And we're going to step and repeat. I'm going to repeat glue all around the edges. down and then last but not least Mr Green Rat all around the edges just like this so onto his tail and then in the middle Okay, so now I've got glue all over my table, but it's fine because it'll wipe. So now I'm going to pop Mr. Green Ratty just there. So all the tails are linked. So, we now have a very colourful Ratty stencil picture. But to finish it off, you're going to need a black felt pen. Right, so I'm going to find my bestest black felt pen. Um, so I'm going to use this Sharpie because I think my other felt pens are getting a bit low on ink. And I'm going to go round the wrap. Now the black outline will make it stand out lovely, especially if you're using colour on a coloured background. So really slowly... We're just going to draw around the wrap. Now, if you just do what I did and make a mistake there, it doesn't matter. We'll come back in a minute and I'll show you exactly how to make that better. So, take your time on this bit. It's really easy, as you've just seen, for your hand to slip. So, really take your time. Now again, the picture I've chosen is quite detailed. So the simpler your design or your picture, the easier this bit will be. I'm just going to go around the tail. Now because we just glued it down, I'm going to hold the tail at the same time to make sure it's definitely all glued down. So Mr Rat is now drawn around. So you see this bit here that I've just made a mistake. That's fine. So what we can do is we can make like a shadow. So what I'm going to do is draw a shadow on that side, okay? So I'm going to thicken the black line all the way around his back. Gives like a bit of a shadow effect. And just around this corner here. To get rid of the mistake there we go and that looks really cool anyway because it looks like it's in shadow so next we're going to do the yellow ratty all around the outside some bits you might need to re-glue or hold down as you go along But remember, it hasn't got to be perfect. So, all the way round, all the way round, your orange rat. Now, 
Now we're going to do the green rat. So we'll go in all the way around. Really carefully. It's really easy. Your hand to slip. And use a felt pen. You don't have to use a sharpie. Sharpie is just the best one that I've got at the minute. So that works really well. Round his claws. Oh, see, I've done it again. Hand slipped again just there. I'll just do another shadow there. You can also thicken the black line if you like, all the way around. So if you'd like, you can go around it a couple of times and make your black line thicker. So this bit here, I'm going to cover up like this. I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to do it down here as well, where his foot is. Make it thicker. So there you have it. That's one version of your wrap. You could also do some of the shadow, like what we've done here, onto this middle wrap and make him look really funky. So that is your first picture. So what I'm going to show you now is how to use the other part of the stencil. So we're going to pop first ratty picture on the floor and we're going to get another rat that's been pre-cut. Okay, so now I'm going to get some plain paper again. Or card, doesn't really matter which. So now we're going to be using this inside of the stencil. So there are two different activity alterations you can do with this. You can use felt pens, so you can do it with your pencil, and I want you to use your stencil to draw around onto your page. Place it anywhere at all you want on your page. I'm going to do it at a slight an angle on one, on one side and I'm just going to draw around with a pencil. Again, it doesn't matter if you get it slightly different or if it goes slightly wrong. You do it with a pencil, you can just rub it out. Also, you can use blue tack to help so it stays in place, or you can just hold it down like I have with my hand. So you've done that, you've drawn around it, you've got your rat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the stencil over and I'm going to do the rat on top of the other rat. So I want to hold it down there. And I'm going to do another rat. So this particular activity, extension of using the stencil, you can actually use lots of different types of stencils. You don't have to use the same one. But if you've just got one cut, then just that's fine, just use the same one. For the sakes of this demonstration, I'm just going to use the one. So now you have two rats drawn on top of each other okay so you can carry on like that and you can build up your design on your paper and then you're going to get some different colored felt pens okay so my favorite color is purple and my second favorite color is red so i'm going to use purple and red first and then i'm going to go green orange whatever colors you've got doesn't matter so i'm going to start with the purple and all I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an area of the shape where the two shapes interlock or, or 
overlap, should I say, and create other shapes within. So can you see where it's overlapped, it's created this area here. Now what you can do is you can colour that area in. So you can just colour it in block colours. So each area is a block colour. You could do patterns and designs in there. So you could do stripes. You could do spots. Do zigzags. Swirls. All different ways of colouring in your design in that area okay so I'm just going to finish off this by doing some little one line stripes like this that way and then that way and I'm going to do some dots in here and there's some little circles there there we go so we've got a really lovely bit of pattern so now I'm going to choose another area where the um, stencil overlaps and I'm going to go around the outline and I'm going to use green. So this one I'm just going to colour in. Okay. Oh, that green's running out. Let me get a new green. Let's try that one. It's better. So now there's not many other areas that overlap that much so I'm going to get my original stencil again and I'm going to draw over again and I'm going to draw on that. So I'm going to hold down Mr Rat and I'm going to draw around. So if you want to use more than one picture on this it's really nice if you use pictures that could go together. So um, you could choose a theme and do pictures from a theme or you could choose a subject and different types of pictures from that subject you could do animals and different types of animals you could do faces you could do anything or you could just do shapes so stars spots stripes so i've gone round again and now i'm going to choose red and i'm going to choose another section where the shape overlaps like this there we go and this time I'm going to do some stripes this way I'm going to do um, another line I'm going to do upright with spots in the middle Maybe because it's red, let's do some hearts, different sizes, and then I want to call those bits in. I'm going to call it feet in. Fab. So, as your picture builds up, you will get a really fab, creative, abstract design. Depending on how detailed your stencils are, you might still be able to tell what the original images are, or you might not. Um, just depends on how much you overlap um, and how much um, detail is in the stencil. So using a black, it's also nice at the very end, if you'd like to see one of the... So say if I build that up, so it's all different patterns and, and colours and shapes. If I'd like to see a rat, say the one in the middle, I could get my black pen and I could go around the whole outline of the rat. That's if you can understand which lines to follow. So let's have a go at that so I can show you. So, point the camera down for you. Let me turn it this way so I can see my rat a little bit clearly so I don't get confused with the other shapes. So I'm going to start on its ears and its head so I can see ears, head, round its back down its tail where's his tail goes tail goes there oh 
it's a bit tricky on some of these areas where it overlaps a lot so you take your time and really look so you can see which bit you need to go over hopefully I'll get this right well, because mine's not all coloured in it's easier to see so you end up with one of your little ratty friends being outlined so you can actually see all the different cool abstract shapes patterns and colors that all mixed together but you can also see a really nice outline okay so one more thing before part one of stenciling street art style is over is we're going to come back to our original stencils now what we would normally use this type of stencil for is we would now once it's been cut out like this we would use spray paint so we pop it on a piece of normally a piece of board and um we'd use a little bit of spray glue to hold it on there and then we'd spray 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 spray, spray and then we'd take it off and that would be our stencil but we haven't got spray paint at home. Well, some of us have, but I'm, I'm sure you guys haven't got spray paint at home. So we're going to be using the paint and we're going to be using the sponges again. So really quickly, I'm going to show you how to use this inner bit of the stencil again for a different design. So I'm going back to my sponges. I'm going to need a tiny bit more yellow, as we've run out, and a tiny bit more pink. Fabulous. And I'm going to position Mr. Ratty. I've forgotten what we've called him. Oh, terrible memory. And I'm going to position him there and then I'm going to use purple because it's my favourite colour. So when I'm when I'm dabbing the purple, okay. I'm dabbing in the paint then I'm dabbing to the side so my sponge is not really 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 wet so you can use again you can use some blue tack to hold down your card but you don't have to and then literally we're gonna sponge over where the stencil is so you can use just one color what is nice when you're using sponges is you can actually blend the colors quite nicely to build it up so we're going to use a bit of pink and we're going to blend the colours together so I'm going to start off with a stripe of pink through the middle and then as the paint starts to fade out I'm going to light touch on those areas just like this so we're getting a bit of a fade from a purple to a pink okay you don't have to fade colours you could just use one colour totally up to you. I'm going to go back in with a tiny bit more purple over the top. Oh, really tiny bit though. Don't overload your paint. Build it up in layers really gently so it's not really wet. And then last but not least, we're going to give him yellow bun. Okay, so we're going to start off just on the yellow. So we'll go all the way down his tail. Make sure you're dabbing from the top and you just up and down, up and down like this, and we're building up the paint layers. And then we're going to go back into the bit where we're blending a little bit. So we're going to be really lightly, as the paint starts to get a bit drier and a bit thinner, we're going to blend a bit of pink into a little bit of yellow so i'm going to go back in with the pink just ever so tiny dabbing really really gently and then i'm going to reveal the big reveal we take our stencil away and we have a beautiful stencil paint three colored blended rat now he's gorgeous I really like that. I really like the style of doing blended colours. You could have done a fourth colour on his tail as well. That would look lovely. And you can build that up. So you can use the wait for the stencil to dry, wait for the picture to dry, and then you can move it along and you can do it again. 
and you can do it as many times as you want building up on a piece of paper you can use colored paper you can use black um that always looks blacks and colors look really nice together um and just basically have a have a play experiment and use the inside and the outside of your stencils however you would like so that concludes my awesome part one stencil workshop i hope you enjoyed it it's a first for me i have never done a any online or video workshops before so um i hope i have been informative and educational and fun <laughs> okay until next time see you later